you guys seem to think I don't like the AirPods Max. Well, let's find out. Hey guys, Thunder E here, and welcome to my review of the AirPods Max with, of course, its lovely case, handbag style. All right, I'm gonna stop making fun of that. Um, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell to get notified with our latest videos. Now, my video of the AirPods Max versus the Sony Mark IVs got a lot of comments. And a lot of you talked about how I was one of the few people who didn't pick the AirPods Max over the, the uh, Mark IVs and why that I was wrong. Some of you said, okay, I was wrong with the sound stage, all that stuff. So I wanna address some of that before we even jump right in. Uh, you hear a lot of people say sound is subjective, and that is very true. But also, when you look at a comparison, I'm looking at what they do and how they stack up together. And that's one of the things with the AirPod Max is that, look, it's a great looking device. It's a solid device overall. So is the Sony Mark IVs. But uh, they both are in two different price points, and you have to kind of gauge that. Now, how does that reference within this video and especially within the review, right? So you take a device like the AirPods Max, priced at $550, there's a certain expectation, right? You're going at that price point, some people will say, look, does it, does it talk to Jesus? You know, does it sweet, whisper sweet nothings into my ear? There are many things that people want to know that this device can actually do. And then when you compare it to something else, you have to gauge that together. Now, Apple has done a really good job with the build quality, the design. It looks really nice, it looks really premium. Um, I take it out of the case. It feels really nice, metal finish, that mesh band, which I will tell you, you have to be careful with it. Um, but overall, the build quality is really solid. And you're going, okay, is that all that makes a device at 550 bucks? No, it's more than that, especially when it comes to audio. You're looking at, um, you know, just the audio quality itself. Uh, you're looking at the active noise cancellation in this case, transparency mode, that kind of stuff in there, battery life, all those things come into play. Now, let's go over to battery life. That's one of the things that, you know, Apple has touted here, 20 hours of battery life, which is good. It's not an industry standard. Uh, we know very well, like, Sony's are roughly around 30 hours. Uh, Bose is at around 24. Uh, other manufacturers between 24 and 30. So the numbers are higher. So this is lower than even expected, but it still lasts quite a while. I've been using it since I got it on Tuesday. T today you're watching this video, it's Saturday. And I eventually charged it on Friday. So I used it for about four days, basically getting close to about that 20 hour uh, use case. So it's good, it's good that it does that, but it doesn't have fast charging. At least it doesn't have fast enough charging. We know other devices have USB Type-C, allowing for that 10 minutes, giving you five hours or seven hours, or whatever the case may be. So those are the things that I would say, look, I'm gonna pay 550. I wanna see some of those features there. I wish it had a USB Type-C port. I wish it had a 3.5 mm jack. Granted, it's Apple. We know that's probably not gonna be the case because they don't like it, but it doesn't come with a cable uh, in the, in the packaging. You have to buy that separately for 35 bucks for a Lightning to, to 3.5 mm cable, which to me is outstanding. Like it's one of those outstanding things you're going like, ah, when I say outstanding, I mean like it's outstandingly like annoying, really, for you to actually go that route, especially when you're already priced that high. I should see accessories in the package, but let's leave that aside and go to the main aspect, the audio. So this is where I have mixed emotions about the audio on here. Now, generally, it is very good. It's very good, it is solid, it's clean, it's crisp, it's nice. It's also really low volumes. Yes, the reason I say that is that when I was doing the comparison with the Mark IVs and also just listening to music directly on my iPhone. Yes, I use my iPhone for the AirPods Max because that's where you're gonna get the best experience. I had to crank my volume up to about 80, 90% to get the full breadth of what they were delivering. Now for me, normally on most of my headphones, I push them at around 50 to 
I don't go past maybe 65 because it's just no need. Now, some people will say, yeah, I can crank it up high and it doesn't give me a lot of um, reverb or feedback. No, it just means that the volume levels are really low because I don't need to go that high. That's how I see it. So for me, that's something that I want them to fix. Now, the other thing also is the fact that like I listen to a lot of tracks. Now, some people ask me, what kind of tracks were you listening to? What kind of music do you used to gauge? So my standard, of course, has always been a lot of Michael Jackson stuff. Beat It is really, it's a really good track to use. Um, I also use uh, a lot of tracks from Muse. Muse Propaganda is a good one. There's a lot of reverb coming in and out. Uh, listen to some um, System of the Down, just to, for just for that you know that that metal comparison there. Some hip hop, just to give you a, give myself a range of how it does. And I would say it handles stuff really well. The drivers are well tuned on the um, AirPods Max. So the highs are solid, the mids are really good. The lows, not so much. So if you're not a low end guy, then sure. Uh, but it still does a good job overall. It almost feels like Apple is compensating for all the uh, low end and beats type tries to put in and they've kind of done, done a better job here. Now, when it comes to the soundstage itself, I initially said, yes, the soundstage felt smaller than the Mark IVs. Now, granted, you know, the Mark IVs don't have a huge sound stage. And this also to me is not something that is really small. It's nothing bad about it. It's just that it felt smaller for me. Now, a lot of my listening on the Mark IV is well-tuned, you know. I've, I've actually customized it to fit a certain style. And I've also done a lot of tuning for my ears with that. So it sounds very different than what you expect from just putting on the headphones. There's a reason why they have an app. And that's something Apple doesn't have here. I want to get some more customization because I, I really think these headphones can drive quite a lot and they do a really good job. Now, Apple doesn't use high-end codecs, they use AAC. Definitely check out um, my buddy Snazzy Labs video on, on the AirPods Max. He goes into some of the things about codecs and things like that. Uh, I still think that codecs are really important. I think that high-end codecs are important because running, you know, running your music on LDAC, also using higher stream quality, gives you a better idea of how well these headphone sounds and also gives you a truly unique listening experience. It's like, it's just really divine, you know? So I use Tidal a lot because I can stream masters, hi-fi audio, highest quality possible to actually get the most out of these, right? Now, active noise cancellation. They've got, done a really good job here. Apple has really come in to match what Sony's done. Yes, I said it, to match. Because Sony, I think, has been the leader here. Now, a lot of people have said the Max is better than the Mark IVs. I can see why. But I would suggest try this out. I'm just putting it out there. Is make sure you get the app on the Mark IVs and do the ANC tuning. Because I have this very annoying sound by my desk right there. It's this high-pitched whistle that comes from the fact that some of the window seals are not just fully sealed. So um, with the AirPods Max, it cuts off most of that. I'll say about, it goes about 95%. I can, I can still hear it, but it's very little. When I put on the Mark IVs, I could hear it quite a bit. And then when I tuned it, it went to about maybe 98%. That's why I said that it's, it matches. Again, it's really good. Like there's no argument here. Like I'm just saying that it is. But the thing about audio and picking back on what the AirPods Max can do is that it does a really good job, but at its price range, is it really that good? So I decided to compare it to something else quickly in this video. I took a look at the Drop THX Panda, uh, which actually came in a day after the Mac, I got the Max in. And I've used it for about maybe three days or so. And the THX Panda is about $400. It faults in certain departments. It doesn't have ANC, but it's not really a fault. It's just a feature that's not built in. But again, a price point you're looking at. It's very simple, clean design, all black. It's got a little knob for control, which also works well, just like the crown, but I like the position here. And it's got, it's got planar magnetic drivers. And those drivers really do a good job in, oh my God, they are so good. 
And that's also, it's one of those things where when you look at it and you look at the placement of the AirPods Max, you go, what else is out there? That's what that price point does. And I think people have to get that specific right there. It's the, at its price point, it starts challenging a lot of norms and saying, okay, if you're at 550, how do you compare to something like the Panda at 400? And in terms of audio, the Panda wins for me. The soundstage is really good. Oh my God, I mean, the levels, each aspect comes out really clear. Uh, it drives really well. Good isolation as well. You know, it doesn't have noise cancelling, but good isolation. And just a solid, clean performance. USB Type-C, fast charging, all that stuff. Now, it sounds like I am railing on the AirPods Max. I'm really not. Trust me, I promise. I'm just saying that for me, especially with the amount of headphones I've listened to, I have headphones that cost a thousand bucks. I've got in-ear wide headphones that cost like 1500. Yes, in-ear wide headphones. And they do a phenomenal job in giving me great audio. I won't recommend them to a lot of people because of course, like it makes no sense. So when you come up to that price point past, I'd say 350, 400, you get into that range where it becomes a bit difficult and you have to justify what you're bringing to the table. Now, I also wanted to bring a different opinion here. Uh, my buddy, uh, Gameski, I reached out to him to ask his thoughts on what he felt with the AirPods Max, and I want you guys to take a listen. All right, guys. So first off, I wanna say it's an honor to be a part of this video. And when being asked what I think audio quality was of the AirPods Max, I think overall, it's very good. I think a lot of people are gonna be completely happy with these, but I think for people that are used to the Sony 1000 XM4s, a pair that has really nice bass, that's one area the AirPods Max definitely dropped the ball. I feel like bass presence, it's there, it's kind of like, it's a quick punch and it just kind of pulls away. It doesn't have that subwoofer type feel, but you can tell that there's a lot of focus on the mids and the highs. It's a very detail sounding headphone. Uh, you can hear vocalists really nicely. It has a wider sound stage, which in my opinion makes it sound pretty natural. It doesn't feel like you're in a closed in space, but not having that punch in the blow end is definitely what would keep me from recommending these over some of the other noise canceling headphones. I just don't think it justifies the $550 price tag where I think you're paying more for the build quality, but you're also paying for that Apple name that's attached to it. So guys, that's my opinion on the AirPods Max. I don't think you're buying a bad product. I just think you're paying a lot more for other things that aren't sound. Yeah, so I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense and I think a lot of people will find different ways to justify or unjustify this device. What I will say is that Apple has done a really good job in crafting their first over-the-ear ear headphones. Whether it's taking some of the ability and heritage they've inherited from Beats and a lot of the things they've done themselves with the AirPods Pro, they've done a really good job. Transparency mode is really good. It's clear, it's crisp. It feels like you're talking to the person just with headphones on your head. Now, in terms of the build quality, it is nice and solid. I forgot to mention earlier, comfort. For me, these are not comfortable. Honestly, they are not. I know a lot of people like them and a lot of people think they're very comfortable. The max I can wear them is an hour. I spent a whole day during the snowstorm trying to wear them for long periods of time. I used it out in the snow. Um, and yeah, it's not water resistant, but you can use it with you know, light, you know, light rain and stuff like that. But wearing them for long periods was a little bit difficult because for me, my problem stems from this. Right here is where I get a lot of pressure on there. The dispersion on the top is fine, but right around here, it just keeps clamping and clamping and clamping. It, it's a slow process. So it's something design-wise can be fixed, but I think the band flex for me just doesn't work. So that's my opinion. Okay, I've gone long and I've rambled. I've talked about how I like, I don't like. It sounds like I'm wavering in, be in between. And the reason is because there's a lot of things they've done well and there are things they just haven't. I don't have to say anything else about this, but that's one. And when you think about the competition and think of the, about the other headphones out there, you're going 550, 300. 300 has all the features, sounds the same, it's great. 550 sounds really good, but doesn't have all those features. So you have to justify. I am not saying they're bad, but I will put it in the words of Linus, 
when he took a look at the AirPods Max when he said, I take issue already with Apple's claims that, what, what did they call this? The, the best audio experience possible or on the market or something like that? They're fucking not. Like, <laughs> within about four seconds, they're not. I definitely agree. That claim is just not justified. They've built a really good product with AirPods Max that make, makes a lot of sense for what Apple does. Is this something you should buy even if you're in the Apple ecosystem? I will say no, simply because you can find alternatives that will work in that ecosystem, giving you the same quality in terms of audio, more features, longer battery life, and give you a better case. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. If you have any questions, any comments, leave them down below. I would love to discuss with you about audio. If you wanna see me do more headphone videos, I know I haven't done a lot in the last year, leave a comment down below. I, I love your opinion, guys. I appreciate it. I, I love all the thoughts you guys have dropped. Thank you very much, and always enjoy your entertainment.